when medicine men do things unhealthy. So you always have to remember that medicine men are human, and humans make mistakes. Yeah, medicine men are human, and humans make mistakes. Medicine men are not perfect. Yeah, just because they 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 do healing work, that does not mean they're smart. It does not mean they're wise. Yeah, they are not Jesus. They are not gods. But in the Western world, you know, when when people hear the term healer or medicine man. Immediately, you know, they think, oh, let's put him on a pedestal and worship him. He's a healer, so he must be good. So everything he says must be correct. And because he's a healer, that means he must never make mistakes. See, people think like this. And why? Because of programming. Yeah? Because we were programmed like this because of society concerning priests, yeah, and 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 the Pope and and other uh, high leaders of other religions, yeah. People believe right away that well, because they're a religious leader, that they must be good people, that you know they must. This shows that you know they you know for some reason they they start viewing them or perceiving them as way up there, that it's not possible for them to make mistakes, yeah? That it's, uh, that it is, um, that they must um, be perfect, yeah? They treat them as if they were gods. So um, this is, this is a, a mistake because it's absolutely not true. Yeah? It is absolutely not true. They are human. And humans make mistakes. Yeah? And that means medicine men make mistakes too. They make mistakes. They do things wrong. And sometimes they give out advice that is not good. Because they're human. Yeah? They are not God. So it's very wrong to think that a medicine man is perfect. Yeah? It's very wrong to think that a medicine man is always going to give good advice. So you always have to, always have to uh, keep that in mind. Yeah? That they are only human, just like you and me. And here is the other thing. In the Lakota perspective, and other tribes are this way too, so I, should, I can say in the Native American perspective, a healer is less than the people because he has no life. He has no personal life. He can't just go fishing when he wants to. He can't. He ne he can never never take a vacation. He can he cannot have working hours. You know he can't say, well, come back to me tomorrow because you know I only do medicine man work from nine to five. He can't say that. In the native world, a healer is on call. 24-7. He, he has to be ready at all times for when people come to him for help. Yeah? So he's actually a servant to the people. He has no personal private life. And uh, this, is, uh, this is what has to be remembered. 
Yeah, this is what has to what has to um people have to remember yeah, that healers are only human and in the native perspective healers are are less than the people. They are they are not above the people. They are not put on a pedestal. Yeah. That is the perspective from the ancient native world. Lots of people when they hear the word medicine man, they think that these are men who are perfect, that they do everything right, and that they make no mistakes, and and that the, all they give is good advice. Yeah, but uh, that's not true. They are human. Yeah, they are human, and humans make mistakes. And in the Western world, when people, you know, associate anything that has to do with, you know, healing or curing a disease, they put them up on a pedestal. And these these kind of people, they also, they think this way too. They think they're, you know, they're better than others. And they want to be worshipped. Yeah. So this is uh, this is really unhealthy uh, to think like that. In the Lakota perspective, a healer is a servant to the people. They are under the people, and normally they're not married because they don't have time. Yeah, they're always working. They're on call 24/7, and they have the weirdest sleep schedules. They have to sleep when they can because there's always somebody coming, you know, for for uh, for help. So they they have to be ready for that at all times. So this is this is the life of a healer. Yeah, that they're very very hardworking people and they are servants. They are not above the people. And they will make mistakes. Yeah, they will make mistakes from time to time. So it's this is part of our human experience. And a mistake is not a bad thing. That's another thing I have to add, uh, is that a mistake is something you can still learn from. And that in, improves the quality of your life. Yeah, as long as you do that, it's not a failure. Yeah. So, um, yes, there are medicine men who have tried to do things very selfishly by trying to manipulate healing energies for selfish reasons, but they end up paying a high price for that. On the Rosebud Sioux Reservation uh, back in the 1960s, I'm, I'm not going to say this guy's name, okay? Because I'm going to I'm going to be respectful, and I don't want to promote him either, okay? But he was a medicine man, and and he kind of went the selfish way because um, people were coming to him and giving him lots of money to work like kind of a dark or black magic against people to try to hurt certain people. And um, one day um, he was doing a a Uweepi ceremony, and this is done inside of a a building where all the furniture is taken out, all the, the, uh, you know, anything modern is taken out of the building or out of the room. And they set up uh, like guards, yeah, to um, to watch all the entrance points, so nothing goes in and nothing comes out until the ceremony is over. 
And in this, I'm not going to explain how to do this, okay, because that's not this type of show. But I will tell you some things that happen. And one of the things that happens is that the the medicine man, the weepy man, uh, he's wrapped up in a rope and uh, very tightly, yeah, and there's just an opening for him to breathe. So from head to toe, he's wrapped up, okay? And uh, when the ceremony is over, the, he's unwrapped and the rope is sitting perfectly wrapped uh, in front of him. And during this, uh, the purpose of the ceremony is some of it is healing. Some of it is to find something or someone that is lost. And uh, it's really an incredible ceremony. Yeah? And it's, an, it's called an ikdomi ceremony in that uh, Iktomi will choose um, men to be Uweepi men, and he'll give them power. And that they can only be Uweepi men for as long as they have that power. Eventually, you know, every time they do a ceremony, they lose some of that power. So eventually they're going to run out of that power, and then they're no longer Uweepi men. That's how it works, okay? That's the uh, the um, interesting thing about being a Uweepi healer is that you, you, when you when you become one, you're only one for a, a time, yeah. Until your your um, until the power is gone, then your 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 job is done, yeah. Then you're you're back to normal again. That's how it works with uh, Uweepi uh, medicine men. Yeah. So, um in this ceremony, they were um this weepy guy, he was um he had he started to develop a reputation of you know of of um like a witch doctor, yeah, like a voodoo guy where uh if you gave him money, uh you know, to, because you want something bad to happen to somebody, you know he would try to manipulate um, the forces of nature to uh, to accomplish that. And um, but see the thing is, when you try to control nature, nature rebalances herself on own okay nature rebalances herself on her own so you these these medicine men who do these kind of things like this dark magic they seem to forget that yeah because they're caught that's what selfishness does it it clouds your mind you 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 don't see the fullness of of the picture and you don't realize that you're going to pay a high price for trying to manipulate nature. So, um, and the, and they, you know, people give them a lot of money. And so, you know, they start, you know, only wanting to, um, you know, do this for the money. So it, it becomes a very, very selfish, um, act So then, um, this guy from Rosebud, he was doing this, he, uh, and and you know, working like a voodoo, yeah. And and then um, one day they were, you know, he was he was doing a Uweepi ceremony, and uh, and. It, like I said, in the beginning of the ceremony, they, they wrapped them up in a rope, yeah, from head to toe, and then, and then when the uh, ceremony is over, the the, ra- the rope is, you know, it's unwrapped from him, and it's sitting perfectly coiled. That's the word I meant to say. The rope is perfectly coiled in front of him, and um, there are beings that come into the ceremony through a light. And these beings, they're called Tunkashilapi. Okay, there's a whole bunch of them. 
they come through this light they they float around the air they um you know they do wonderful things in the ceremony and and they're the ones who are doing the the healing and stuff like that okay so um this guy he was um this medicine, this Uipi guy, he was uh, doing selfish voodoo things, yeah, voodoo-like things. And at this Uipi ceremony, you know, in, as the ceremony was was starting, see that they turn, there's there's no electricity in the room, yeah, so it's they make it completely dark, so that these beings can come, yeah, so. Um, they did that. So it was completely dark in there and there were people sitting around the room and and um and then all of a sudden, you know, as the ceremony started they heard loud boom on the ceiling. And this guy was was crying. This medicine man he was crying. Somebody help me, turn the, turn the lights on, help me, help me. He was really crying like he was scared for his life. So, um, emergency, emergency, help, help, help. You know, he was saying that. So they opened the door and they brought some lights in. And here he was on the ceiling. He was a spread eagle on the ceiling. Something was holding him on the ceiling that they couldn't see. Yeah, it's like he was glued to the ceiling. He couldn't move. And so um, they down the road was another medicine man. So they went to him. The people went there and told him what happened. So he went over there. And uh, he he looked at what was going on and he said, yeah, he said, see, this is what happens when you when you try to, uh, you know, do use your healing in a selfish way, you know, use the healing power in a selfish way to hurt other people, you're going to pay a price. And he said that Tangashilapi, they're giving you a warning. And they're telling you, if you do this one more time, you're going to pay with your life. So think about that. What's your answer? So this, uh, this you um, weepy guy, he said, okay, okay, I promise, I promise to never do it again. And when he said that, whatever was holding him on the ceiling slammed him to the floor. He didn't just drop. It's like something threw him. Yeah? Like just, you know how when you get really mad and you take your T-shirt off and you just throw it on the floor? (laughs) Damn it anyway, this Diet Coke really tastes no good. (laughs) Accidentally bought a Diet Coke. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like that kind of anger? <laughs> Damn it, these pants don't fit anymore. They're shrunk. <laughs> maybe maybe you gained weight and <laughs> trying trying to blame the pants. <laughs> But the, when you slam something on the floor, yeah, that's how this Yuipi guy was thrown on the floor. The Tungashilapi slammed him to the floor, and uh, he broke uh, broke his jaw. And uh, they took him to the hospital, and he had his jaw reset and, so, and wired, yeah, because it was broken. And so. Um, for a while, things seemed to be okay, but the selfishness was too strong in this guy. So uh, somebody came to him and uh, asked him to hurt somebody else with a spell, paid him $5,000, and he took it. 
Yeah. The next day, uh, he was uh, driving to town because they medicine men normally they live out in the country, and on reservations, the country roads are black. Uh, not, uh, they're what you call it. They're uh, gravel roads. And he, it was broad daylight. Yeah. Nice day. Nice still summer day. And something on his car went wrong and the car blew up. And he died. It was a crispy critter. Yeah. And he burnt, burnt completely. And this is a true story. This is this is not uh, made up. Yeah? This is a, a real true story. So he paid with his life. Yeah? The Tungasti Lapi, they had compassion on him. And they said, we're going to give you one chance. He didn't take it. And so he ended up losing his life. See, this is what happens when you try to play with the powers of nature. You're trying to manipulate the powers of nature in a selfish way. This is what's going to happen. You're going to pay a very high price. Yeah? So, um, that's an example. Yeah. Another one happened on to a girl from our reservation, the Shine River Sioux tribe. It was, I'm not going to say her name out of um, out of uh, respect to her family because they are a very traditional family. Okay, and I don't want to put them on the spot, but she was a victim of something like this. She was a very, very well known dancer, powwow dancer. And this story happened in the 1970s, yeah? Early, no, 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 I take that back. It happened in the late 1960s. This girl is older than me. And she was a teenager. And she went up to Canada with her family to a powwow. And, um, uh, you know, they... They always go up there. And wherever she dances in contest, she always wins. That's how good she is. She's really good. And so she went up there and, you know, they they come from a very traditional family. And so they, you know, everybody, they always shake hands wherever they go. And, you know, nice to be here. Nice to see you. You know, things like that. And then, um, you know, the powwows usually start on on Friday and they end on Sunday, yeah. And uh, they have like an afternoon session and an evening session. And the mornings are usually free. So um, the uh, oh, usually they start on Friday evening, yeah, because people are getting off work and stuff like that. So they usually start on Friday evening. So Friday evening, uh, she had her first dance competition. And usually at the end of the competition, all the dancers shake hands. Yeah. So uh, after her competition, all the girls uh, were shaking hands. And she was about 16 years old at this time. And uh, Saturday morning, she woke up. Her legs hurt. Yeah? Her calves uh, hurt her calf muscles they hurt um, so she decided to uh, she was going to dance anyway and uh, so the afternoon session she danced but she really really uh, hurt bad and and, uh, and this, usually there's two songs yeah a fast a regular one and a really fast one like a trick song and in the second song, she fell. She was in excruciating pain. She couldn't even stand up. So she took herself out of the competition. Because traditionally, if you fall or if you don't stop on the beat, you take yourself out of the competition. That's what 
that's the traditional rule. But today they don't do that. They just stay in there because they're dancing for money. Yeah? And they don't want to follow the traditional rules anymore. But this girl is traditional. So she took herself out because she fell. Yeah? But she was in excruciating pain. She couldn't even stand up. So her father and uh, some other guys went out there and they they carried her uh, back to their, their tent. And she was crying. I said, I, I don't know what's wrong. She said, that really, really hurt. She was really crying. So they, they're just, there was a medicine man nearby. So they asked for him to come. So he went over there. And he examined her leg. And he said, oh, gee. He said, somebody sent you a bad medicine. He said, I got, I, do you want me to take it out? And uh, the family said, yes take it out so he did a small ceremony on her left calf her left calf muscle and he pulled out a baby snake from her leg and he said somebody sent this to her and he said the way they do it is through porcupine quills yeah that they shake they shake uh like they usually do it when they like if you shake somebody's hand usually they have it hidden in their hand yeah so when you sh when you shake hands with them, it, it goes from their hand into your body, and they're kind of enchanted, like yeah. So you don't feel anything, and once they go in your body, they get into your blood, and then they they make you sick. And somebody did that to you, he said. It's probably a dancer, and. Uh, and she, and she said she shook everybody's hand, so they didn't know who it was. So the medicine man said, well, we're going to find out. He said, I'm going to return it. He said, he said I'm going to return those quills to whoever sent them to you. So he worked on her leg and pulled the two quills out. There was two porcupine quills. He pulled them out of her leg. And then uh, he, pr he put some medicine on her wound and, and uh, sewed her up and, and you know, she started to feel better soon, yeah. And so, um, so um, then he did a. Uh, he sang to these two quills. He had them in the palm of his hands. Then he blew on them, and they took off. Took off through the air. And the medicine man said, "Okay, now we're going to find out who sent these." So, the, the, in in uh, a few hours, somebody's going to get sick. So um, that evening, they went to watch the dance competition. Yeah, they went to watch the dance competition, and uh, she just wanted to support the other dancers. Yeah, so she went over there because she's really traditional thinking. So she, her, and her family went, and during the evening performance, one of the ladies fell down. She started grabbing her, her calf muscle. And uh, the girl from our reservation, she was shocked because that was her best friend. Yeah, she couldn't believe it. And she was like, my God, my best friend. So uh, her, this, her best friend's family came and, and they took her out. Yeah. And uh, they were, they were trying to, uh, you know, they took her to the hospital, but sa uh, Sunday morning, um, the girl was still in pain. She, uh, the doctors, they just gave her aspirin, yeah, because they couldn't find anything. They couldn't find anything wrong. So that medicine man, he went over to uh, this girl's, this the the best friend. Yeah, he went over to the best friend and her family, and he told them. He said, uh, "I know." that you guys sent a black magic to this girl from Shan River. I returned it. That's how we, we wanted to find out who sent it. So we returned it to whoever sent it. And it turns out it's you guys. And the father was shocked. The father of the best friend was shocked. He had no idea that his daughter did that out of jealousy. But the mother knew. 
Yeah, the mother of the best friend knew about this. In fact, it was the mother's idea to do this. Yeah. So uh, this medicine man said, see, when you try to do something to hurt somebody, it's going to come back to you stronger. And you're going to pay a price. Yeah. Well, this this girl, the best friend, she didn't do any, you know, she didn't go to a medicine man. And these quills were in her too long. So she had to lose one of her legs. Gangrene had set in. And she had to lose one of her legs so she never can dance again in her life. Yeah, so the medicine man said, see, this is what happens. When you try to use nature to hurt other people for selfish reasons, you're going to pay a price. And he said, be lucky you just lost a leg. He said, because most of the time when you do this, you die. You really were lucky, he said. You only lost a leg. You could have lost your whole life. True story. So the um, the um, girl from Shine River, she went to her this other girl. And she said, "I'm really sorry that you felt jealous." He said, "I I considered you like my sister." She said. And it's sad, she said, because today I lost my sister. She said, I would never hurt you, she said. I was always happy to see you. I really like the way you dance. I wish I could dance like you. And you hurt me. Yeah, and now I know it's because you were jealous. That really hurts me. She said, I was never jealous of you. I looked up to you. I went to you for advice. And you thank me by trying to hurt me or by hurting me. And I lost you now, she said. So the Cheyenne River family returned back to uh, America. Yeah, see, look, everybody lost. Yeah, the Cheyenne River girl lost her best friend. Her former best friend lost one of her legs. And the medicine man, the the other medicine man, whoever sent the, whoever enchanted those quills, something happened to him too. Yeah. So uh, the good medicine man, he he helped to restore balance. Yeah. But it was nature. Yeah. He, he the nature worked through him to help restore the balance, and and uh, thank goodness the Cheyenne River girl, you know, she didn't lose her her dancing or anything. This is a true story. These are the kind of things that happen when you try to use the healing power in a selfish way to hurt somebody because you don't like them, because you're jealous of them. It's going to come back to you and it could take your life. When you try to do that, you're going to pay a very, very high price. And in some instances, you may use, you may lose your family because you did that. So you see, medicine men, 
They're not perfect. Yeah, sometimes they they make mistakes. They try to to use, you know, the healing powers in a selfish way to hurt other people. And usually the reason why is they're doing it because of money. This shows you that medicine men are only human. They're not supermen. They're not above anybody. They do make mistakes, and sometimes those mistakes they make are very, very costly mistakes. So this, you know, working, you know, this like the like a dark magic kind of thing, it doesn't work in the long run. What happens is you end up losing big time. You're going to pay a very, very high price when you try to do something like that. This is all based on the Lakota star knowledge, natural law of generosity called Wawokie. What you send out comes back to you four times as strong. If it's healthy, then it's good then that's a nice thing. But if it's selfish and unhealthy, look out. It's coming back stronger to you in the same way that you sent it. It's gonna hurt you. So when you try to hurt others, you hurt yourself more. You could even lose your life or the life of your loved ones. Yeah? So it's worth it to live a healthy life. 